five bold predictions for tomorrow night's matchup between Texas and UTSA in DKR. You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show, Jonathan Davis and Lacey Butler, your host. Today's episode of Locked on Longhorns brought to you by Game Time. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account and use code Locked on College for $20 off your first purchase. On today's episode of Locked on Longhorns, five bold predictions for Texas UTSA. And then in the second and third segment, mailbag slash YouTube comments, uh, getting some of your comments live and direct, reacting to them live and direct on the show. All of that and more. On today's episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So obviously it's not Michigan, you know what I mean? But, you know, I am really excited for this UTSA game uh, tomorrow night. I will be in the building. So, you know, on the off chance you see me, you know, during the game or, you know, outside the game, wherever, you know, come up to me and holler at me. Uh, I promise I don't bite. (laughs) You know what I mean? And I love meeting people, of course, love leading, uh, love meeting, excuse me, Uh, you know, Longhorn fans just like me. So, you know, like I said, if you see me at the game, uh, you know, holler at me, yell at me, come up to me. You can even touch me on the shoulder, whatever you need to do. Because like I said, I love meeting uh, people that just, you know, love the Texas Longhorns as much as I do. But super excited for this game. First night game of the year um, should be an electric environment. Um, and yeah, Texas should beat up on UTSA pretty bad. right? So we should all have a, a good time at the game if you're going. Five bold predictions for Texas and UTSA tomorrow night. The first one is Texas will run for 250 yards, right, in this game. And that may not even sound bold. It may not sound crazy. When you look at it, Texas ran for 190 yards against Colorado State. They came back against Michigan and then ran for 143 yards. So they've run for 333 yards in the season combined in the first two games. I think Texas will eclipse the 250 yard mark in one game tomorrow night against UTSA. When you look at it, we've seen with Steve Sarkeesian, right? When the game is in hand, when he feels like, all right, we won the game, he kind of, you know, changes his game plan, right? He kind of goes into a different mode of just run the ball and get out of here with the victory, right? Which is surprising, especially this year, because I thought that he kind of would, you know, ride the coattails of Quinn Ewers Heisman campaign, right? Especially against teams like, UTSA, ULM, who, you know, haven't played yet. We haven't played UTSA yet either. And then Colorado State, right? Like those are the games where if you're trying to win the Heisman, you can really pad your stats and just go out there and throw for 400 yards and five, six touchdowns, right? And really put it on them. But we saw against Colorado State, right? He took him out the game in the middle of the third quarter. And then when the game was in hand against, you know, Michigan, even though Arch Manning didn't come in the game, we kind of went to that run heavy offense, right? So I would imagine that the game gets out of hand early tomorrow, right? And even if Arch Manning comes in and he throws some passes, we're going to run the ball early and often. And I expect in the second half, we'll probably be 75% run to 25% pass, right? Because the game will be out of hand. Like I said, Steve Sarkeesian is going to go in that mode of just run the ball and get out of there, right? But I do think we'll be able to run the ball effectively no matter who's in there, right? From the first quarter to the fourth quarter, Jaden Blue, I don't know if we'll see, you know, a ton of him. Um, but yeah, whoever's in there, we're going to be able to run the ball really effectively just against a, a, a torn down, a, a worn down and a, and a UTSA team that should not be on the same field as the University of Texas, right? or at least shouldn't be competitive with them. So I think they can get to 250 yards in this game, right? Like I said, I think we're going to run the ball early and often. I think in the second half, we're really going to pound it down their throats. If you look at it, I think we'll probably run the ball 40 plus times, right? I expect to see us run the ball 40 plus times. And I think we can run the ball at a high five, you know, kind of yards per carry or six yards per carry plus clip. So if you run it 40 times at six yards per carry, that puts you at 240. You know, even if you run it 40, 41, 42, 45, whatever at high fives, that'll put you at that 240, 250 mark. And I think we see Texas bust out some big runs, right? Not just the, you know, six, seven, eight at a time. I think we see Texas bust out a couple 30, 40, maybe even 50 yard runs, right? And really just hit their head on the goalpost with their big runs and that big offensive line opening up holes for our three headed monster and Jared Gibson, uh, Jaden Blue, and Trey Wisner. So I think Texas can run for 250 yards tomorrow night. And I think they do it. They have their best rushing performance of the season thus far. Number two, 
true freshman Jared Gibson has his first 100 yard rushing game. Right. I already talked about how I think Texas will go for over 250 yards. And I think Jared Gibson will be the biggest beneficiary of that. You know, Jaden Blue, we saw him come out of the Michigan game with the ankle injury. You know, he came back in the second half, made some plays, made that great juke on one of the corners. Right? I mean, just absolutely left him in the dirt, you know, on his way to, you know, almost scoring. Um, and so I think he'll play, you know, um, I don't think Sark will put too much on his workload, but I think he'll play early on. I think we'll see the bulk of Trey Wisner, right? Trey Wisner will get a ton of carries, a ton of touches in the first quarter, second quarter, maybe even early in the third. But I think you're going to see a lot of Jared Gibson probably in the second quarter and then mostly Jared Gibson in the second half. And like I said, I think we're going to be able to run the ball really well early and often. So if Jared Gibson is running the ball from the second to the fourth quarter, I think he busts a couple big ones. We've already seen him. He looks like a man amongst boys. You know what I mean? Like he looks like a, a sophomore or a junior or, you know, a sophomore or a junior, even though he's a true freshman. So I think Jared Gibson has his first 100 yard game. I think he gets the bulk of the carries in this game just based on how the game flow goes. And, you know, Texas putting UTSA away early. And I think true freshman Jared Gibson, who's been, you know, really one of the best players on the team thus far. He's been a pleasant surprise, at least to me. You know, we knew he had the talent, but it's another thing to come in as a true freshman and ball right away. I think he has his first 100 yard game as a true freshman at running back. Speaking of true freshman. Another one I want to talk about for my third bowl prediction is Ryan Wingo, right? And my bowl prediction is that Ryan Wingo, who led the team in receiving in week one against Colorado State, led the team in rushing right, in week two against Michigan, will lead Texas in receiving again in week three. So two out of his first three games on this Texas football team in this super talented wide receiver core, Ryan Wingo will lead the team in receiving. What we've seen is in the important passing downs, right? <laughs> because, you know, you know, you kind of were able to rotate at the end of the Michigan game and you certainly were able to rotate at the end of the Colorado state game, but in the important passing sets and downs, right. Where the games, you know, weren't out of balance yet. Um, you have Isaiah bond as your wide receiver one, and you have Matthew golden as your wide receiver two, right? Like when, you know, the game is still in the balance, when there are important passing downs, you're going to see Isaiah bond and Matthew golden out there the majority of the time. But when there's three wide receivers out there, we've seen, you know, somewhat of a rotation, right? John T. cook, Silas Bolden and Deandre Moore and Ryan Wingo at that spot. But for the most part, right. We've seen Ryan Wingo kind of be a part of both rotations, right? We've seen Ryan Wingo get in there, with the ones with Isaiah Bond and Matthew Golden in both games. And then kind of when the game is out of hand, especially in that Colorado State game, we've seen Ryan Wingo, a true freshman, just to get him reps in that second rotation as well with, you know, John T. Cook, uh, Silas Bolden and DeAndre Moore. So I think the same thing is going to happen against UTSA. I think Ryan Wingo will get some early snaps. He'll get some opportunities from Quinn Ewers. And then when Arch Manning comes in and he's able to throw the ball and, you know, kind of flex on UTSA as well, I think Ryan Wingo will be a part of that rotation as well, right? So I think early on you'll see a lot of Isaiah Bond, Matthew Golden, and then a rotation at that third spot, which will include Ryan Wingo. And then I think when Arch Manning comes in and the backups largely come in, you know, when Isaiah Bond and, you know, Matthew Golden sit down, I think you'll see a lot of Ryan Wingo then as well. Right. So Ryan Wingo probably will play the majority of the game. And I think because of that, he'll end up leading the team in receiving once again for the second time in the first three games of his career. Now, moving on to the defensive side of the ball, my fourth bowl prediction is that this Texas football team has four plus sacks tomorrow night. And I know what you're thinking with the front we have, you know, bringing over Trey Moore and, you know, all the talented pass rushers we have. That's not necessarily a bold prediction. The only reason I'm saying it's a bold prediction is because Texas Texas only has one sack on the season thus far, and it was from Colin, Seaman, uh, Colin Simmons. <laughs> oh my God, Colin Simmons late in the game against Michigan, right? So they only have one sack on the season thus far. A ton of pressures, but only one sack, right? And so I think they're finally able to put it all together tomorrow night, a night game uh, in front of 100,000 plus. You know, it's going to be a really, you know, raucous crowd at DKR. Everybody's, got, everybody's going to be excited, one, because it's a night game, but two, coming off that big Michigan win. Um, and so, yeah, I think Trey Moore going against his old team, I think he gets two plus sacks by himself. I think Colin Simmons, uh, you know, Baron Sorrell, Ethan Burke, and then our interior defensive line, hell, even our linebackers, right? If Pekakowski gets exotic, I think they get after the quarterback, and I think they have four plus sacks. And like I said, it doesn't sound too crazy, but this Longhorn team only has one sack through the first two games. I think they get four plus tomorrow night against UTSA. And then my fifth bowl prediction, this is probably the boldest of the all right and the one that probably is the least likely to happen 
I think the defense gets their second shutout in the first three games, right? Obviously, they shut out Colorado State 52 to zero. I think they shut out UTSA as well, right? This UTSA football team is just not great, right? I don't think Jeff Trailer has enough, you know, tricks up his sleeve to make this game even remotely competitive against the University of Texas. I think Texas is going to score on the majority of their drives, which will, you know, force, uh, you know, UTSA to have to return kicks and not punts. Right. And I think that a lot of times you'll see this UTSA football team kind of starting their drives around the 20, 25 yard line. Right. Which would mean for them to even get a field goal, they're probably at least going to have to drive the ball 45 to 50 yards. And what we've seen is first team defense, second team defense, they're dogs nonetheless. Right. And even our second team defense is going to come in and probably shut down this UTSA offense. And I just don't see them on any drive being able to get 45, 50 yards. Obviously, anything can happen. You know, one big play, uh, you know, the defense at the end of the game lets up a little bit. You know, anything could happen. And they're probably going to find a way to get a field goal. You know what I mean? Just like Colorado State probably would have got a field goal until he threw the pick to World Dale Mac at the very end of the game. So it is a bold prediction, but I think it's certainly possible. So I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think Texas gets their second shutout once again in two games, in three games, excuse me, after shutting out Colorado State. I believe they shut out UTSA tomorrow night as well. All right, quick word from our sponsors, and then we get into some of your YouTube comments, right? Some of your, some of my favorite YouTube comments from you over the last couple of weeks. I, re to, I react to them. <laughs> I'm out of it, right? I react to them live on the show today. All right, today's episode of Locked On Law is brought to you by eBay Motors, right? Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Also, this episode is brought to you by Factor Meals. Fuel up with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. Crush your wellness goals this fall with dietitian-approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Head to factormeals.com slash lockedoncollege50 and use code lockedoncollege50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code lockedoncollege50 at factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month while your subscription is active all right getting into like i said some of my favorite youtube comments from you all over the last you know couple of weeks since the season started really over the last three weeks uh the first one is as always hook em, sark and quinn the best quarterback head coach duo no debate this is from an episode i did on tuesday uh, with max chadwick from pro football focus and i asked him you know outside of outside of georgia with you know Kirby Smart and Carson Beck, do you believe that you know Quinn Ewers and Steve Sarkeesian are you know the best head coach quarterback duo in college football? Right. And he pretty much agreed that you know whether you feel like Sark is the second best coach in college football or whether you feel like Quinn Ewers is the second best quarterback in college football outside of the University of Georgia, there is not a team in the country right now that you can say definitively has a better quarterback and coach than Steve Sarkeesian and Quinn Ewers. And that's why Texas is certainly poised to be a national championship contender throughout the season. And then when it's all said and done, 
as far as this comment saying they're the best, hands down, no debate. I don't know if I can go there yet, right? Obviously, you have to give Kirby Smart the deference, you know, over 40 regular season wins in a row, uh, you know, two out of the last three national championships. And I firmly believe if they would have made it to the playoffs, if they would have handled business in the SEC championship, they would have won the Natty three years in a row, right? And they're certainly the favorites to win it right now. Of course, you know, Texas is going to have a lot to say about that by the end of the year. Uh, but I would still put Kirby Smart over Steve Sarkeesian right now. And I think that, you know, Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers, from what I've seen, at least right now, is a wash, right? One week, Carson Beck looks better. One week, Quinn Ewers looks better. So I would still give that deference to the University of Georgia of having the best quarterback and, you know, coaching combo right now with Kirby Smart and Carson Beck. But I certainly think that Steve Sarkeesian and Quinn Ewers are number two in the country. And there's no, you know, there's no shame in being number two. There's over 130 FBS programs. I know number two is not as sexy as number one, but like I said, there's 130 teams and everybody can't be the University of Georgia. I certainly put Texas at number two with their quarterback and head coach combo with Steve Sarkeesian and Quinn Ewers. About the Michigan game, great win, great game played. Let's be honest. We all see what's been happening the last season and a half. But until we come into Georgia week undefeated and beat an undefeated Georgia team, we're just in the hunt as a top three team. We can't let off the gas. Michigan is a shell of itself. We have to win the games we're supposed to win. Nothing accomplished yet. You know, I respect that mindset, but I think that's like a mindset more reserved for if you're actually on the football team. Right. Like you don't want to get too high. If you're on the football team by beating Michigan, but you can come out and struggle against UTSA or, you know, if you look ahead of teams on your schedule, you know, then you maybe can you know find yourself in a trap game or lose a game that you're supposed to win. Right. Because you were overlooking a team fans like you got to live where your feet are. Right. You got to appreciate and enjoy the moment. We just beat Michigan, whether you feel like they're a top 10 team or not. That's one of the toughest places to play in college football. And Texas went up there and whooped up on them, right? And so we can't say, oh, well, Michigan, it doesn't mean anything. Like the only game on our schedule that means something is Georgia. Live where your feet are, right? Embrace and enjoy every win. You just went through a decade-long period of where Texas football didn't look like Texas football, right? And we can't get to the point now to where we're acting like the Michigan game just didn't mean anything to us, right? Live where your feet are. Enjoy every win, whether it's Colorado State, Michigan, because we all remember a time period where these wins weren't necessarily a foregone conclusion. Right. So live where your feet are, man. That Michigan win was a huge win. Regardless of what you feel about Michigan, that was a huge win. You know what I'm saying? We can't just say Georgia and everybody else. Right. Live where your feet are. Enjoy every week of the college football season. This Texas performance is exactly what I was hoping to see. I kept hearing people saying Michigan would stop the Texas run and there was no way Texas could run at that talented D line. My response was always, have you seen how Sark extends the running game outside the tackles? Texas can run without running directly at them. The plan to run side to side and wear out that D line, then run downhill when they were out of the game was brilliant and effective coaching. That said, while I was confident about that game, I had no idea Texas could dominate Michigan that much. It wasn't even near as close as the score implies. Michigan got dog walked in their own house. It's making me feel much more confident about Georgia at home. And I'm also feeling like, oh, you're going to get double dipped Donkey Kong smashed by Texas. First by the fake Tennessee UT, and then again by the real UT at Red River. <laughs> you know, as far as the meat of that, I completely understand. I mean, I completely agree, you know, and understand, <laughs> you know, Sark uh, definitely had a great game plan, um, you know, against the Michigan defense. And I thought it worked to perfection. Right. I thought that they never knocked Sark off his pivot. I said that a couple of times this week. I thought Sark went in there and did everything he wanted to do. Right. Everything he envisioned in the game plan, he went into the game and was able to do. Right. And the same thing in terms of I felt comfortable about Texas going in there and beating Michigan. I felt even pretty comfortable about Texas winning by a touchdown and covering the spread. I did not think they would beat them by 19 points. And like he said, 31 to 12 doesn't even really exemplify how, you know, it makes the you know game a lot closer, seem a lot closer than it actually was. If you didn't watch the game and just looked at the box score, right? Like it felt like they beat them by more than 19 points. That game was over in the first half. So, uh, yeah, I agree with everything he said, right? You know, Texas absolutely went in there and dominated them, did exactly what they wanted. And 31-12 does not do what we saw on the field justice. People keep making excuses. Sorry, man. Spectrum has, you know, been doing Spectrum themes. So I'm, I'm going to start that one over. People keep making excuses for how much talent Michigan lost to the NFL. Texas lost damn near every key player from last year and still beat their ass. Michigan lost 13 players to the draft. Texas lost 11 players to the draft, right? Two players don't make that much of a difference. I know they lost, you know, the majority of their coaching staff as well. But, you know, when you look at it, right, like Michigan lost 13 players. They look like a completely different football team. Texas lost 11 players. It might be better than they were last year, right? It's just about continuity, 
recruiting and bringing back the right people at the right positions. Right. But, you know, just like Quinn Ewers has an Arch Manning coming right after him. You know what I mean? They could have had a, you know, a J.J. McCarthy type quarterback coming right after J.J. And so, you know, because of Michigan's failure to recruit at the quarterback position, you now have Davis Warren and Alex Orgy, and neither one of them can throw the ball. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it just comes down to recruiting, right? You know, Michigan didn't make sure they were still great at the most important positions. Texas did. And so they both lost double digit players to the draft. Michigan is not a great team. Texas is one of the best in the country. Would you agree that the first game against Bama, the 2019, the 2010-19 game in 2022 was the turnaround game for the program? You know, I was at that game, you know, probably one of the best moments of my life, even in a loss. Right. Just watching, you know, a 21 point underdog Texas team coming off a five and seven year compete with Alabama like that. But like I said, we still had, you know, I said this in the comments, I should say, but we still had some bad losses that year. You know, Texas Tech, even though Quinn was hurt, uh, we lost to Oklahoma State. That was a very bad loss. We lost to TCU, even though TCU was a top five team in the country. We should have won that game at home. And then, you know, a lot of people feel like we should have beat Michigan, uh, not Michigan, but Washington in the bowl game. Right. So, you know, when you look at it, you know, I think that that was a great performance from Texas. But I really, truly think the turnaround of the program was when they actually beat Alabama in 2023. This is pretty cool. I didn't know they had a group talk talking about our uh, big SEC roundtable we do every week. We record it Tuesday night. It drops on my channel and every Locked On College channel every Thursday, right? So if you want to get perspective from all of the SEC hosts at one time, check it out every Thursday on this channel for sure. Jonathan, I hope you learned a valuable lesson. It's never the right call to root for the Aggies under any circumstances. Also, welcome back for a new and exciting season of Longhorn football. This is in week one when I picked Texas A&M to beat Notre Dame. Never again. Right. Even though I was kind of right that Notre Dame wasn't what everybody thought they were. Texas A&M wasn't what I thought they were either. Right. So, you know, they both bad. Right. Quick word from our sponsors. And then I get into some more of my favorite YouTube comments from you over the last couple of weeks. All right, today's episode of Locked On Longhorns also brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, right? When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just a job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites, so if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate. Within 24 hours, hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. That's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. All right. So this was before the season to his credit. Right. This is not after seeing, you know, the Michigan game and, you know, changing his tune. Once again, this was before the season. Prediction undefeated calling it right now also we're destroying the maroon team the maroon team which would be texas a&m but based on their performance through the first two weeks i have no problem calling them the maroon team especially since i stuck my neck out for them against notre dame and then they embarrassed me right and i have to say now you know obviously the georgia game is a big game but it's at home so texas has somewhat of an advantage there right in front of a hundred thousand of their fans and you know texas if they can get past georgia and obviously oklahoma the week before that but if they get past georgia that means they got past you know oklahoma if they get past georgia undefeated then yeah i mean you're looking at a texas team that at that point very well should go undefeated it would be a disappointment if they didn't go undefeated based on the rest of their schedule so after the michigan win the way that they dominated them on the road undefeated doesn't sound as crazy as it might have before the season every single year this is from a couple of oklahoma fans that were salty before every single year since 2010 texas media has pushed that their team is god's gift to football brought up how talented the recruiting classes have been they haven't been remotely correct until last season as skeptical as you are of Oklahoma, do you understand why people would have reservations on Texas? Texas hasn't put back-to-back -back good seasons together since 08-09. For some reason, Oklahoma fans love looking in the rearview mirror, and they don't realize that 2024 has, you know, or 2012 to 2020, 2021 has no effect on 2024, right? It just doesn't, right? For Oklahoma and for Texas, like we're seeing that right now in 4k through the first two weeks of the season right so this oklahoma fan came into the season skeptical of texas i should write them back right now and ask them how skeptical they are right now right stop trying to judge texas in 2024 based on what they did 
over the last decade. Like it's a different era. It's a different regime at the University of Texas. It's clear as day. Right. If you can get that hate out your heart and judge it from a football stance and not a, I'm an Oklahoma fan and I hate Texas stance. You'll see that. Right. Just like everything Oklahoma did in the Lincoln Riley era is not translating right now with Brent Venables. Right. Like it's that simple. Stop using the old Texas to judge the new Texas when the new Texas is clearly different than the old Texas. Alabama had a down year after their 2021 season and losing several players to the NFL. LSU had a losing record in 2021 after winning the national championship in the 2020 season and lose many players to the NFL. So I agree with John from Locked On Sooners that most teams see a drop off the following year after losing that many players to the NFL. It's not like they lost six, but 11. That is a lot to lose in one year. My response was that Georgia lost 15 in 2022 and then came back and won the national championship. And then, of course, they moved the goalposts and said, you're comparing Georgia to Texas. Ha, 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 ha. But how has Texas looked so far after losing 11 players to the NFL draft? Like you just get to a certain point with programs like this where, you know what I mean? You don't rebuild, you reload. Right. Alabama didn't rebuild. They reloaded. Georgia didn't rebuild. They reloaded. Right. Texas didn't rebuild. We reloaded. Here we go with another Oklahoma fan. I want to see what Texas does with Michigan before I crown them a top five team. If it's within a score well into the third quarter, Texas needs to look in the mirror and figure it out. Well, it wasn't right. You saw what Texas did against Michigan and it wasn't within a score within the third quarter. I'm sure if I messaged him, though, and asked him what he thought about Texas, he would say, I need to see what they do against Georgia. They love kicking the can down the road, right? They love kicking the can down the road. And Oklahoma fans are in shambles because they've been right about Texas for so long, right? They've been right about Texas for so long, right? But now they're wrong right? and they can't handle it. Like they can't handle it. Now they're wrong. So I really want to message him and say, what do you think about Texas now? And I guarantee you, he would say, well, I want to see what they do against Georgia, right? After saying, I want to see what they do against Michigan, right? It's crazy. Like I said, they just keep kicking the can down the road. They're going to keep me wrong. And I want to end it with like a crazy, you know, I don't know if it's a hot take, but like a crazy take uh, from one of my most loyal subscribers. I don't even want to put his name out there, right? You know what I'm saying? But crazy take from one of my most loyal subscribers, Oklahoma, right, hasn't been legitimately better than Texas in about 10 years. They squeaked out a couple of wins during that stretch because Big 12 officials absolutely refused to call holding. Oklahoma defense can't couldn't stop anything last year. Oklahoma does not have a quarterback. Oklahoma does not have an offensive line. Yep, John Williams, you're right. Oklahoma is a softball school. Hook up. All right, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Enjoy your weekend. Once again, if you see me at the UTSA game, holla. Hook em. Peace.